Am I, does here we go mean I can go or? Okay. <laughs> so. You're listening to the dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is a bilingual American history podcast where each week I, Dave Anthony, miracle worker, man who hates miracle whip. What? Are these all miracle themed? And a third? I can't think of another miracle thing. Sure. Come on. Reads a story from Miracle from Mile. American, Mer, Mer, used to live on the Miracle Mile. Uh-huh. Reads a story from American history to his friend. Whew, Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is about. And, and Nemesis. And that was brutal. Not We're not Nemesis again mm-hmm. for the last time. I pick who my Nemesis is. We've I gone just, through this. We talk. You're 100% often, my Nemesis. It's not how it works. It just isn't. We'll, we'll see, because life's long and shit can get really weird. What is that? I mean, it's a horrible thing to say to someone that is absolutely a friend of yours. Well, let's just keep going. I mean, this part of the show is not... It's not just, what? It's not a good part. It's a part where we talk about honesty and we share our feelings. I just helped you name your third thing in your dumb bio. So I think... Wow, you really explained that well. I'm re- we're all so ready to start. Nobody cares. Adam. I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like Adam. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the place. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. At, at some point, I'm going to actually remember to bring in the new theme. But it's, sure. we're coming up on, uh, well, we are. We're at 400. Yeah, we're so, not coming. We are. This is 400. Uh, <clears throat> so we should probably have a new theme. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Great idea. Uh, we don't have a lot of time on that. Uh, so uh, let's just say our dates. Uh, we're going to be in uh, Wisconsin. We'll be in Madison on October 18th. We'll be in Milwaukee on October 20th. And then uh, in November, we are off to Europe. Uh, we'll be in uh, Stockholm, Oslo, uh, Amsterdam, Cardiff, Birmingham, Manch- Manchester sold out, uh, Glasgow, Glasgow sold out, uh, London. London. We added a second show in London on the 22nd. There's still tickets available for that one. And then we're in Dublin. And there's still tickets available for Dublin. You're someone not allowed, someone was like, uh, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't buy tickets in time for Dublin. And I look, I'm like, no, there's still tickets. He's like, I just assumed you were sold out. Huh, that's a good way. <laughs> that's that's the perfect air you want to have. No, just that is... have people think you're sold out so you don't sell out. It's just... It's a great fan base. It's perfect. <laughs> it's exactly what you want, just to get to that level. It's the minimal amount of effort I can You experience that, right? Where oh your shows God. are empty because everyone thinks you're so popular? I figured it was there's no <laughs> seats. Why bother? We should say who's here. Oh, this yeah. Is, uh, joining us, we've never had an in-studio guest, except your mom, which, eh, not really a guest as much as just like a, a family member. Sure. <clears throat> Does that make sense? I'd rather keep talking. Um, uh, our guest, our first ever celebrity guest? How's that? Sure. Pam sure. a celebrity? Pam's not a ce- well. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think our guest is bigger than Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Oswald joins us for number four hundred. Hello, everyone. Hi. What's my which camera's mine? Where's my goddamn eye line? Oh what? yeah, we should right, say that one. Yeah. Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. We're also it blew on, my intro. Unbelievable. Well, this obviously, is, I decided to make YouTube. you seem charming. As, oh, good. As, Thank we, you. as all yeah. right. Originally, uh, so for this episode, I, I lied to Pat and I told him it was going to be at Henry Kissinger mm-hmm. to get him in here. Oh, uh, what? Uh, Wait, you lied to Henry him? Kissinger. So you thought that would get me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did Christopher love... <laughs> Hitchens leave any meat on those bones? <laughs> Do you, don't you love genocide? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Dear God. So, uh,. It's not about Kissinger. I wasn't lied to at all, so I'm still in the yeah. same spot. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Aaron, do you want to put up the uh, image? Whoa. Oh, wow. Shit. <laughs> For real. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Episode number 400 yeah. is our friend, Ronald Reagan. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Dave. That's right, RWR. Uh, Let's do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <clears throat> February 6, 1911. Woo! Year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ronald Wilson Reagan was born at home. Well. Yeah, nice. He's born. <laughs> his, save that. Okay. Save that. Yeah, he's oh, not, sorry. Yeah, he's not quite there yet. Oh, sorry. Uh, his parents were Jack and Nell, and he had an older brother, Neil. Young Ronald was known, uh, had a Dutch boy haircut, so he was known as Dutch. 
Sure. Uh, wow. For a long time, he was called Dutch. Uh, I'm not going to call him Dutch. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, Jack and Nell uh, acted in local shows, and Jack really liked to drink. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and his drinking became worse and worse and worse over the years. Family moved a lot. Uh, five times in 10 years when he was young, Jack would sell shoes, and so he'd go to a different town. He'd get fired for drinking, and they move on to the next town. Just a good old fashioned life. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, what a perfect. I just love upbringing. that you can be a guy who sells shoes and show up in a new town and be like, I know shoes. <laughs> and I yeah. don't drink. <laughs> right. All right, I'm a drunk and doesn't have the yeah. shoes. All right, let's give him a house anyway. <laughs> yeah. He's got two kids and a wife. Give him a house. <laughs> so uh, they finally settled for good in Dixon, Illinois. Mm. Jack was very, very liberal, and he was very vocal about it. He talked about reapportioning wealth. He was very against the Ku Klux Klan, and he instilled a respect for FDR and young Ronald. Mm -hmm. okay. So Ronald grew up idolizing FDR. Grew up very, as you, as you can see, yeah. very liberal. It's oh my God, it's, Come the on. connection seems clear. It's yeah. Uh, he was athletic. He played basketball, baseball, and he ran track. He went to Eureka College and joined the Tau Kappa Epsilon fraternity. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah, it's one of the best. Yeah. The tight, tight, tight. Yeah, you epsilon in man. Yeah, yeah. Um, he uh, the, at some point the fraternity demanded the college president's resignation after he decided to cut some programs. Okay. So Ronald's fraternity is behind this big movement. Uh, they get everyone to go on strike. Of. <laughs> Ronald, uh, well, there's a student like what, strike. Who, what service the are you removing? The students are the employees. The students go on strike. They All the go students on strike. go on strike. Okay. okay. We, are, we are halting our intellects and not gaining any more knowledge right now. Yeah. <laughs> knowledge strike. Uh, <laughs> freshman Ronald Reagan gives the speech of demands. Okay. Because he's a big liberal. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, and they win and the president is forced out. Whoa. Okay. So wow. Ronald Reagan learns the power of strikes. And that was the basis of the movie Animal House. All right. <laughs> That's I, right. Did I get that wrong? I might, let me yes. go on IMDb. I'll check that out. <laughs> Hang on. I might be wrong. Go ahead. After college, Ronald wanted to work in radio, uh, but he got a, a job at the Star Courier newspaper, and his job was to announce baseball scores. Okay, that's pretty so easy. So what he job. would do is, that, so the baseball scores would come in after the paper was printed. Right. So what he would do is, he was hired to walk out on the second floor balcony with a megaphone. What? And he would announce <laughs> baseball scores this is to the fans in the job. street. This is the greatest <laughs> way. Yeah. I'm sorry. A sport crier? So he's a, yeah, he's a human <laughs> glockenspiel. Like, oh, it's three o'clock. Reagan's coming out. Yeah. Hello, citizen. <laughs> it's the mail ticker. <laughs> <laughs> What the so hell? He would sit, people would sit in the street. And he would walk out and go like, uh, the, the, the Cardinals scored. It's three to two. Oh, what a great job. <laughs> wow. Talk about so, a job where you could drink like your father. So he, he was a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, That's right. right. Basically, yeah. he started as a podcaster. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that kicked off his sports broadcasting career. From there, he moved into radio, and he worked his way all the way up to announcing for the Cubs. Okay. No, he, would, he wouldn't go to games. He would announce... They would go out and it would, and they would. Someone would send him what was happening through Morse code, and then he would make it up on the fly. He would make what up on the fly? He would get like a Morse code thing and be like, "Someone stole third. Like they had Morse code for everything that was but happening on the talk, field. Would he make it seem like he was watching it as it happened? Was that yes? And he would so, play. He would play a record that had applause, and he hit it with his. He <laughs> oh, hit this it with is his foot. becoming like. <laughs> this is like genuinely kind of sad. <laughs> God, entertainment was so awful back then. Uh, People were just excited and by easy. nothing. Uh, it was really like, easy. It was, it was great. Great. man. Wow. So, word on the street is a lot of people didn't show up to the games because they thought they were sold out. After, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, he uh, so he did that for a while. He became huge. He has millions of listeners listening to his Cubs game where he's fake calling. Right. Sure. Uh, he announces for four years, and then he talks him into sending. He talks him into the the owners into sending him out with the Cubs to spring training. Okay. Because he has his eyes on Hollywood. Oh. So he goes to spring training in California. The Cubs <laughs> used to train on Catalina Island. What? They, wait. <laughs> so, sorry. The Chicago Cubs. <laughs> and also, knowing how difficult transport was back then. Yeah. 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 Let's get them. Let's move them across. The and then off the continent to an island. What's the hardest place we can get to? <laughs> Welcome to Baseball Island. <laughs> You're playing for your lives, boys. <laughs> If you get cut, you got to swim off. <laughs> Good Lord. 
just seems insanely <laughs> yeah. inefficient. Yeah, right. So he starts. We lost um, three on the journey of spring training. <laughs> Yeah, we lost our pitcher in a swell. It's all right. <laughs> Big title surge. We Boys, lost the bullpen's drowned. <laughs> Boys, next year we're getting a boat to get to the island. <laughs> oh, that'll be good. That's a good investment. <laughs> uh, so he starts networking, uh, and soon he gets a screen test, and Warner's offers him a seven-year contract. Okay. okay. Nice. So they change his name from Dutch to Re- uh, t- uh, Dutch Reagan to Ronald Reagan. So he, hang on. So he was yeah. now just full time Dutch Reagan. He was he was Dutch Reagan until oh. this is the first time he became Ronald Reagan. Hello, oh welcome God. to the Dutch Ra- the Dutch Reagan Radio <laughs> Hour. Yeah, it's yeah. just me and a crowd full of people. <laughs> Drop the needle, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them today. They sound just like last week. Uh, his parents moved close, uh, so Ronald could help take care of him. It's nice. His right. dad's still drunk. Dad's either. still yeah. drinking. Yeah, well, these guys need shoes. Do your friends need shoes, Ron? <laughs> Dad, get in the car. Uh, his parents lived in West Hollywood. D- okay. Did they? Wow. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, his dad's liberal. Uh-huh. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, Ronald was in eight movies in 1938, all B movies. And then he started dating Jane Wyman while she was married to her second husband. Okay. Oh, Reagan. Yeah. Ronnie. Little du- <laughs> Dutchy <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Screen Actors Guild, SAG. Did he had play a record of her having orgasms <laughs> when they had sex? <laughs> his foot. Oh. Now that's right. You like oh. that, don't you? <laughs> she would send him telegrams as to what she was doing sexually. And he would, now I'm taking off your panties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> hot. <laughs> <laughs> More sexed. <laughs> Uh, so S- the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, had just started. Um, Ronald called SAG, quote, a damned noble organization. Hmm. Nice. Okay. He became very involved, uh, and Ronald loved to talk about politics. Some actors found him annoying. <laughs> when they worked with him, one actor said they would all try to avoid sitting with him at lunch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> to avoid, quote, Professor Reagan's discourses. <laughs> oh, God. And hey, Professor Reagan over there. Hey, you know yeah. where we got bean sprouts? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Here he oh, is again. Good Lord. Good Lord. Well, it turns out Ronald had gotten a subscription to Reader's Digest, and he would read every episode front to back and regurgitate it to anyone who would listen. Oh. Well, that's the problem with him getting these crier gigs. He's just yeah, like, if he... I just talk at people, they're in. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of how humor can be found in uniform. <laughs> you know... One time, oh, as the God. table vacates, we're all like, "We know what you're doing, Ronnie." <laughs> he probably just wanted to sit alone. Yeah. Just... God, readers, just imagine. Oh someone. yeah. Wow. I mean, just the most bland yeah. fucking nonsense. Oh, just, and, oh. Do you know how tables were made? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> do you know how tables? Were made? A man found a piece of wood, and then he found four <laughs> others. Hold on, I'm just getting going. <laughs> You won't believe what happens next. Yeah, there's a table. I can't believe Reader's Digest made this into a 10-page story, but here we go. What a ride. Um, so Jane was pressuring Ronald into marrying, and he did not want to marry. Mm-hmm. He's dragging his feet. Uh, so she threatened to kill herself if she if he didn't. Wow. Wow, gosh. Which is a not, powerful. not yeah. a red flag. No, no, no not no. at all. Yeah. <laughs> you, then you totally. do it. You do yeah, it. I mean, you obviously do it. You're yeah. like, oh, well, she really wants well, it. You like, don't uh, date that girl. You marry her. I didn't think you were serious until you did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> okay. Now I know it's real. So these feelings are yeah. for real. Uh, so uh, she did. She, in January 1940, she OD'd on pills oh, and was Jesus. hospitalized. What the Jesus Christ. Fuck? The next day, they were engaged. Oh, Wait. Ladies, that's how you do it. Oh, so she Te- survived. Learn OD. from Jane Wine. Wow. Yeah. I didn't believe you. It is very hard. At that point, it's hard to say no. You're yeah, really boxed in. You really are. Well, yeah. I mean, she's in a hospital bed. You're like, you for sure. Yeah, we should totally. Yes, absolutely. This sure? seems. Let's talk to some doctors and yeah. let's some, some brain people. But yeah. So, uh... He didn't want to have a baby. She did, so they had a baby. Yeah, you don't push back anymore in this marriage. <laughs> this, this now is no, it's unpushed backable. You know anything? Yeah. I'd like you to sleep in the tub. All right. Well, that's well what I mean, you this want. is just this is part and parcel with him just regurgitating what he's told to do. Read these sports scores. Marry this crazy woman. Ha- she wants a baby. Give her a baby. All right. I, I well, suppose. I, I suppose. I don't push I back. Do. 
Uh, so uh, they had baby Maureen. Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ronald got his big break in 1940 in Newt Rockney All American. Uh, the a, Gipper. Yeah. Went to the, oh, the Gipper. okay, right. <clears throat> Jack died, and uh, and they supported Ronald's mom. Mm. Okay. So Ronald got. Uh, Who did he leave the shoes to? <clears throat> <laughs> well, the <laughs> reading of the willed shoes. <laughs> it's gonna be a while, guys. He had a lot of them. He was drunk. He was burying some of them. We don't know what he was doing in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of shoe maps here, so let's get moving. We gotta mill the market. It's gonna be a day, here. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Ronald, uh, the war's on. Uh, Ronald is a pacifist. Hmm. Wow, what a vocal pacifist! Uh, but he gets called up. Uh, he gets two deferments. Warner's held him out, held him out with one, and then after two, they're like, "You gotta go." So in 1942, uh, he he's assigned uh, to go. Into the army, okay, mm-hmm. and he is sent to first motion picture unit in Hollywood. Whoa! Whoa what? what he got deployed oh, to Burbank? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, actually, Culver City. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. You're, How you're does s- that? <laughs> what? You're serving <laughs> under Colonel Karloff. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> do you, I mean, do you even need to take a bus anywhere? Yeah. Or just, just fucking living at home. He's just gonna drive on. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I gotta drive on to the base. <laughs> At a spot right up front. (laughs) Hut to action. (laughs) What? Uh. All right. I want you boys to stop pretending. (laughs) Stop pretending you're other people, boys. You slimy scumbag. You call that acting? I want five accents and I want them now. Now you choke yourself. (laughs) Hello, governor. Oh, get this guy out of here. (laughs) Christ. Uh, So what they did was they made recruitment films. Uh, He was in some. He narrated some. He was on recruiting posters, and he went around the country selling bonds. Right. So he's like a salesman for the war. Exactly, right? Right. yeah. Which That's... I don't think it was hard to get people to join, but whatever. Yeah, people, but also, people were fired up. As a pacifist, <laughs> this a is weird. a bit of a shift. Yeah, but yeah. kind of perfect for him. He doesn't have to go fight. Right. Uh, I, logically, yes, that actually makes oh, so sense. He's, he's it, not... The shift is to personal pacifism. Yeah, I don't think he really... I mean, you, as we get through this story, you'll, you'll realize he doesn't care about other people all that much. What, Ronnie? What? <laughs> Right. Okay. Dutchy. Uh, so he never leaves the U.S. during the war, but because he's so out there, he's considered a war hero. Wow! Right? He's he's the PR guy. Wow! So, uh, the face of he's the face. Wow. Fantastic! Way to go, Ron! <laughs> In March yeah. uh, 1945, uh, they adopted a baby, Michael Edward. And in December 1945, Ronald was discharged. Okay. Now, so that's about three Which years. Is, all right, clean out your trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn in, soldier, turn in your food voucher. Uh, can I have your commissary yeah. pass? <laughs> yeah. Put the commissary coffee down. You have been discharged. You're out of here. That's army coffee. Come on. <laughs> the regular one's actually next to it. There's regular coffee right next to the army one right there, Ron. Great, great, great work over there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he, now he's, it's, things have changed. He is sort of, his type is completely outdated in Hollywood. They're, they're suddenly looking for more nuanced, interesting actors. Right. And he's really one dimensional and bland. Like right. he's like the old school. On time and sober. Right, right. Uh, that's right. So two unions, IATSE and CSU were fighting for control of crews in Hollywood. Okay. And IATSE called CSA communists. Uh, all right. Uh, and so Ronald uh, became a SAG vice president, and CSU wanted to go on strike, but Ronald hated communists. Okay. Mm. So he got SAG to align with IATSE and reject the call for a strike. Okay. He said the strike, quote, was a plot to get economic control of the picture business and that the communists were subverting Hollywood to spur revolution. Here it is. Here's a, here's a nice little here bend. Go. Here's our boy. Nice little bend happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. There you go. He's complete a I scientist. See the long game. <laughs> yeah. So he talked endlessly, as we said. Oh, God. At a party, he started blathering, and Jane whispered to a friend, quote, I'm so bored with him, I'll either kill him or kill myself. <laughs> That's, by the way, not an idle threat. Yeah, no, no. Not no. an idle threat that at is, all. When she whispers that, you're like, Jane, Jesus, Jane. come on, uh, not again. I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. Jane, Jane. Well, you know, by the way, back then, one of the ways you could be branded a communist, and this is true, 
is if you hated Nazism too early. <laughs> er, I'm not kidding. Early on in the early 30s, it was oh, communism or, or Nazism. And people oh. who hated Nazism too early were like, well, they're obviously a communist. In other words, you had, to, you, had you, you had to start hating Nazism at the right time. Right, yeah. right. Well, and because, that literally would get you tagged a communist. Because wow. at first, fascism wasn't bad. Like, right. Or was it like, wasn't oh, looked at as bad by America. As yeah. com- right. It, it was still is really, <laughs> That's actually very true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so another night out, they were with a couple. And Jane said, quote, hey, diary of the mouth, shut up. Maybe we can get in a word in edgewise. Wow. All right. So she's fully, she's come wow. full circle. She's out of the cocoon and flying now. There you go. Hey, diary of mouth. <laughs> she's like a jerky boy now. It's like a, like a Lockhorns comic. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly. Jesus. Hey, diary of mouth. Hey. hey she sizz- traveled around with a symbol. Yeah. Hey, sizzle chest. <laughs> Uh, Jane told June Allison, quote, don't ask Ronnie what time it is because he will tell you how a watch is made. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they're having a great yeah. marriage. <laughs> I mean, that's just a great marriage. Oh, yeah. Boy. So uh, Ronald still considers himself a New Deal Democrat. He believes in uh, government. He he thinks that uh, government should own uh, public utilities and not private companies. Mm-hmm. He's, he's big into public housing. Like he's on board with the whole fucking deal. And he thought he had a duty at the same time to root out communists. Mm. Right. So McCarthyism mm. comes along and Hollywood rats are naming names. That's right. And the FBI recruited Ronald Reagan as a snitch. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Ronnie, <laughs> I miss Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. He Just would read sh- baseball scores. Dude. I know, right? Yeah. He yeah. would share private SAG files with the FBI. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. What a douchebag. Yeah. And name suspected communists. Wow. Wow. Those were usually actors who opposed his SAG leadership. Wow. So he was. I'm amazed he didn't use it like against actors that were getting roles that he wanted. Oh, that like, would have been a nice was, move. Like he did it to help his own career to get like <laughs> all well, his types. Oh, <laughs> Montgomery clips not available anymore. Oh, <laughs> guess I'll have to step in and uh, and do I, this. I do more nuanced stuff now. <laughs> uh. That's great. holy. Shit. Another guy who looks just like you, Ron. That's right. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> I'm the only good one left. It seems. So Ronald became president of SAG in March 1947. Uh, Jane was pregnant with her third child. It's good to keep having children in this situation. Yeah, it sounds. This I mean, it's, I think it's the only way to shut him up is yeah. to fuck him. Right. right. Hey, <laughs> hey, diarrhea mouth. Throw a baby in me. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> well, all right. I guess I could yeah. sling one more. But do you want to hear about? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just fuck, fuck me, Jesus Please. Christ. <laughs> Well, you know, the gas turbine Shut has up. an interesting but, history. But put, this pillow, put the pillow on your Shut mouth. Up Shut up and up. come. Well, it's going to be a while. <laughs> Did you hear about the baseball scores? Cardinals are dipping. <laughs> Ron! <laughs> you know bees can't see the color red. Is it? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so... Ronald's shooting a movie. Uh, he's shooting a movie with Shirley Temple. It's like her first, like, I'm an adult movie. Oh, wow. All right. And he decides to do his own stunt. Okay. What, what, <laughs> what high-level stunts are in this Shirley Temple movie? Yeah, vehicle? exactly. Well, it's just jumping into a lake. Well, the first John Wick movie was a remake of the Shirley Temple one. So, yeah, that was, I don't know if you know that. That was originally a Shirley Temple film. John Wick, little cutie, grown up. <laughs> All grown up. So he jumps in this cold lake over and over and over and over again. Sure. And a couple of days later, later he is hospitalized with pneumonia. Oh, God. And it's a bad kind. It's like some weird viral one, and they don't know if he's going to live or die. Yeah, it's so lake he's pneumonia. Just fucking it's yeah. lake pneumonia. Um, so Jane goes into premature labor, uh, has the baby, baby dies. Uh, so he gets out. He survives. Sorry. Yeah. It's tough. <clears throat> the ripple effect of that lake death would oh, <laughs> really, yeah. we'll really change some things, yeah. I think. Really, would have, that lake would be a national monument. Right? <laughs> I've got one more in me. No, Ron, we got it. I could do one more. Now we're good. That director's call changed yeah, history please. forever. In October, uh, Ron testified in front of the HUAC as a friendly witness, right? Communist. <clears throat> uh-huh. Sure. 
hearings. Uh, he didn't name anyone, <clears throat> but when he came home, Jane demanded a divorce. Okay. She got custody of the children, and after the divorce, Ronald ran into Errol Flynn. Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, boy. Flynn told him, quote, be happy, old sport. Think of the parties. Think of the girls. Do what I do. Well, yeah, have sex with a uh, 13-year-old. <laughs> Errol Flynn was a fucking yeah, monster. Yeah. That, that's not a... Don't follow that example. It's, oh, it's awful. It's good news, Ron. Yeah. Have you ever Just heard... Just drink a quart of gin and then take your dick out of the playground. Have Just you... like old Errol Flynn. Have you ever heard our Errol Flynn episode? It's uh, crazy. I, I, I know that... I mean, I've read his autobiography. It's horrifying. It's, uh, He's a, he was a horrifying human being. He's maybe one of the worst humans I've yes, ever Yes, totally ever. was. Oh, wow. So this is 15 years after Errol's rape trial, so Ronald takes his advice. Obviously. Be- <laughs> obviously, yeah. And begins womanizing. Ronald had read uh, that World War I vets were forgiven their taxes for the years they served. Right. right. So when they mm-hmm. served, they came back and like, you don't have to pay taxes for yeah. those years. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service. A tax per year. Yeah. So he knew that when he went into the service. So he just didn't pay his taxes that year, thinking that the same thing would happen to World War II vets. Okay. Uh-huh. That didn't happen. Oh. The government did not forgive their taxes. Okay. Ronald was livid. I mean, he was in Hollywood. <laughs> like I understand. I mean, he's, he is literally acting like he's a soldier now. Not yeah. only, not only the was, part I was born to play. <laughs> not only was he in Hollywood, but his salary, like his normal yeah. salary, was like in our in our money, be like forty five thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And then when he went into the army, it was it was like you know a thousand bucks a a month like he didn't have to pay that much in taxes right but he was just mad by the concept of it like he's he's like he's like one of those dads that's forced to pay alimony and is mad right. Right. yeah <clears throat> right men's rights suddenly yeah. he's into men's rights yeah. he's totally yeah. a men's rights guy <laughs> hey those listen i served those key lights were hot all right some of those close-ups were brutal we lost two grips at lunch that day <laughs> that ravioli <Yeah>. was old <laughs> still haunted <laughs> Uh, so <clears throat> his acting career is now floundering, as we said. Uh, any movie he's in, he's getting bad reviews. There's no audiences coming out. Um, also, I, th- I think post divorce, Jane's skyrocketed. Yeah, she's taking her off. career went, got r- started going really oh, well. Wow, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So Jack Warner also casts Errol Flynn in a movie that Ronald had brought to the studio. He brings a script to the studio and he's like, "Can I make this?" And he's like, "Yeah, just do these other movies first, and then they end up <laughs> casting." Errol Flynn in the movie that Ron <laughs> brought to him. Oh, God. Okay. So he's not happy about that. Right. No. Then in June 1949, Ronald broke his leg in six places in a charity baseball game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, how hard was he? What was he doing? <laughs> Did anyone tell him? Just a charity. They're just, what the Fuck hell? Fuck you, Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clean him. <laughs> yeah. I just tried to slide into Tor Johnson. <laughs> Snapped his femur. My, fem- ah, my leg. <laughs> well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ethel Merman like line derived him. <laughs> She's she, the catcher. Yeah, she spiked him. Go, <laughs> oh, God, Ethel, get out of my way! <laughs> uh, so he spent six weeks in the hospital, uh, like in traction or whatever, you know. Jesus. Um, and then he reflects on his life. He's thirty-eight. He's divorced. He's got a fading movie career. Yeah. So uh-huh. things he's realizing things aren't great. Now, Nancy Davis had been kicking around Hollywood for a while. Sure. Mm-hmm. She was raised by her actress mother and doctor stepfather, who was not tolerant of anyone he believed to be intellectually inferior. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, that included blacks, Catholics, and Jews. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And Nancy adored him. Oh, God. Oh, um. She accepted his belief that, quote, men were to be the leaders and women to follow. Oh, dear. She studied uh, drama at college and then. White drama. uh, She studied white drama. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) White manly drama. That's what she studied. (laughs) Only that. (laughs) Only white manly drama. She gets out uh, to become an actress. And uh, now Spencer Tracy had been nursed through his alcoholic binges by Nancy's stepfather. Uh Okay. So, by the way, when he would finish a movie. He would check into this is true. He would he would stay sober during the shooting. He would check into a hotel room with a steamer case full of liquor. He would sit naked in the bathtub <laughs> and just drink, puke and shit all over himself. Stand up, wash it all down the drain, sit down and just keep going 
for like two weeks. That's oh what he would God. do in between shoots. I'm not kidding. Oh my God. It was just. This. What are you doing for hiatus, Spence? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the old shit flume again. I just wrapped on Captain's oh. Courageous, and it's God. time to <laughs> drink a vat of scotch. That Off to is, my waist tub. <laughs> and yet, that is someone's porn. Yeah, like it is. someone yeah. wants that. Uh, yeah. God yeah. damn it, I want to get one of those dispenser Tracy. <laughs> Just please tell me somebody filmed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hit her stepfather, nurse him through these binges or whatever he had to deal with at the end of those. No, I mean, and really, what, you just stand in the bathroom like, all right, Spence, <laughs> nice shit. I assume that he would take him out of it so he could get to a movie. I'm sure he would, at the end of the, t- the toot he was on, right. he would then do a week of drying him out yeah, and right, get him. Because right. she was like, we need him in a week. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. All right, right. Fine. All right. Get him ready. Pick him up out of his vomit tub. <laughs> <laughs> get the hose. <laughs> hey, hose off Spencer Tracy. We got this uh, desk set script. Just going to be really good. I'll get him an Oscar. His Somebody hand. hose him off. Hands are tied on a meat cleaver, like on a meat hook. <laughs> Flip him, flip him, keep like, spinning him. It's like Scar- keep, get the it's fire like, hose. Like this, that, some of this is really caked on the back, oh like paint. God. It's like uh, from Scarface, except yeah. it's not a ho- it's not a it's not a chainsaw to hose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody de vomit Spencer. We got to shoot in here at the wind. <laughs> oh God. So. He, because of the connection, promises to get Nancy a screen test. Okay. At the same time, he gives her a number to Clark Gable, and they dated for a few months. Hey, thanks, Ron. Uh, the studio casting director, so he gets like a big director to, to shoot it and a big actor. Okay. And gives it to the studio casting director who watches Nancy's screen test and, quote, told the studio she had no talent. Okay, dokie. Oof. But Tracy still got the studio to sign her anyway. Huh. Okay. It's clout. Yeah. <clears throat> Nancy dated a few men, according to Kitty Kelly. Nancy, quote, was around in Hollywood for performing oral sex. What? Wow. Best head she in, was, in Hollywood. That's I, I read that, that was, Kitty Kelly book. It was pretty brutal. That was uh and I and I look and I looked into it. I'd like to see if it was real or not. And and everyone's like, Yeah, it's salacious, but there's a lot of there's real it's real. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh so <clears throat> at some point she decided she wanted Ronald. Mm. Okay. And uh, she set her sights on him, and he finally asked her out. She loved his nonstop chatter. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> this is new for me. <laughs> Tell me more about how a lock system works for shipping. <laughs> it's not easy. Well, it's, it's lengthy <laughs> and not easy, not entertaining, but let's start. Do you know about rope? <laughs> <laughs> so she realized that astrology was the key to his heart. What? Oh, I thought that was a thing that didn't happen till the white the, the, as far back as the forties. She was wow. So what do you mean? she He's... would go to monthly meetings with Ronald at Carol Ryder's mansion. Ryder was big shit in Hollywood. He was a Philadelphia lawyer who became an astrologer and now advised big names like Cary Grant, Princess Grace, and Ronald Reagan. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Not so good. astrology is like this big, this new thing. thing yeah. Uh, in public, Nancy always tried to be by Ronald's side, and she would spend as much time as she could with his kids, playing, singing, dancing, having a good time. Mm-hmm. Okay. They dated for three years, That's and cool. all the while, Ronald saw other women. Oh, wow. Interesting. Hmm. He was in love with an actress named Christine Larson, who he proposed to in 1951, but she turned him down. Okay. So they kept their relationship secret. He and Nancy. (laughs) He and, uh, no, Nancy's out. He and Christine. No one knows about Christine. Oh, my God. Uh, So photos would appear in magazines of Ronald with with many women. Uh, May 1950, silver screen, quote, never thought we'd come right out and call Ronnie Reagan a wolf, but let's face it, suddenly every glamour gal considers him a super sexy escort for the evening. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, just, I wow. mean, <laughs> it's too much. I think we can all agree. <laughs> That's what we're all experiencing is it's yeah. just too much. <laughs> it's good God. The- the 50s were, 40s, yeah, were so yeah. awful. Just Look at the wolf gross. taking the meat back to the lair. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. A-lister, Ron Reagan at it again. 
Uh, there were also women he did not take out in public who he was seeing, like Jacqueline Park. Mm. Quote, Ronnie never took me out in public, never gave me a present. He swore me to secrecy about our relationship and said I couldn't tell anybody at the studio about us. Sounds like a pretty healthy relationship. When I got pregnant, I found out that our relationship didn't really mean anything to him at all. Oh boy. He said, you're what? <laughs> well, it's not from me. Not mine. No, sir. It's not mine. He was awful. He said, I know how you Hollywood starlets play around with everybody, and then you try to blame good people like me, but you can't get away with it. There's no proof that you've been, ever been with me. You're just going to have to work this one out for yourself. I don't want to be involved. And then he hung up on me. I didn't know what to do. He was so powerful, and I was just a nobody, so I called my friend, and he arranged for me to have an abortion. Wow. Yikes. Jesus. Win one for the Gipper. Yep. <clears throat> hey. Jesus. Then, uh, so, so fucking sad. Anyway, yeah. uh, then Nancy, right after that, found out she was pregnant. Oh boy. Okay, let's see how Ronnie handles yeah. this. Yeah, from the mouth. Well, first, <laughs> first he went right to. Christ- you know what? If she'd only just said no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's alright. Okay. Someone had to. Right, yeah. uh, well, he immediately told Christine first and said he uh, felt trapped. What? Yeah. Oh, what a creep. A few days later, Ronald hit on Celine Walters at a club. She was 19. He was 41. She gave him her number and address, hoping he'd help her career. Okay. But Ronald showed up at 3 a.m. that night. Quote, he forced me on the couch, and I kept trying to keep a conversation going, saying stupid things like, oh, tell me about your latest movie, and oh, we'll talk about that another time. You're so beautiful. Let's get to know each other. He was so big, I couldn't fight him off. It was the most pitch battle I've ever had, and suddenly, in a matter of seconds, I lost. I was so shocked and angry because he had spoiled everything. I told him, too, but he said, oh, I just couldn't help myself. Don't worry about a thing. I'm going to call you, and we'll go hang out, and then we'll talk some more about your career. A week later, she read that her rapist was marrying Nancy Davis. Oh, my God. Christ. Fuck. This is... uh, 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 I mean, I know this guy's a shit heel. Yeah, but I, I did not recognize that he was a right. rapist. Yeah, and well, then, I mean, it's, which it's, it's that gigantic cosmic historical shit fuckery that he yeah. did. But then you're like, oh yeah, even in the little tiny personal moments, he was also just the a origin story shit. is also Every yeah thing he could be shitty about. He was shitty about. That's like, fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, in the macro and oh god, I mean, the list terrible. of presidents who have raped right? someone and it's just it's, just it's fucking ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Like, it's almost now again, like you got a to, thing you... A rite of passage. But again, you've got to keep in mind that up until recently, men forcing themselves on women was a, seen as a charming thing sometimes. Yeah. Like, you watch the fucking James Bond movies, or, yeah. you know, he, they're just forcing themselves. Yeah. They're like, ooh, what a man. It's yeah, like, I know, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it's really, not really gnarly. I mean, what, three of our last six presidents? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that we know of. That we know of. <laughs> that we, yeah, exactly. There's probably more. I right. think we could probably take Jimmy Carter off the list. <laughs> <laughs> he probably dodged the bullet. That we're probably pretty. He's been. Though. He's yeah, been. Yeah, right. yeah, he's the one who's saying to someone like, "No yeah. means no. I just, I can't. <laughs> I just trying to build you a house. I mean, I know this. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, so Nancy was two and a half months pregnant when they married. She refused to have anything to do with his kids after they got married. So right, she's playing with him. She's hanging right. out. She's having fun with him. Wow. As soon as she gets married, done. Wow. And then who who was the kid they had together? That was uh, Patricia. Oh, okay. Okay. Patty. So his career was drying up, and Nancy had no career. Uh, they had a lot of overhead. They had a home, uh, a ranch supporting his mom, child support, and the IRS date debt. Uh huh. So for money, he became a nightclub act in Vegas. What? What the Reagan fuck? Reagan did? <laughs> he did I, three what months. What the fuck was his nightclub act? <laughs> this is quite a wrinkle, David. I, I took it off because there was not enough room, but it was just like song and dance oh. shit. It was what you'd think. Uh, I'd like to invite a lady out of the audience so I could assault her. <laughs> <laughs> He's just reading sports scores. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the classics. I'll do the hits. Uh, this is about uh, how... Communists are bad. <laughs> yeah, he would read the new Reader's Digest. That was <laughs> Four-hour right. show. Sorry, so these pages are stuck together. Bear with me. Can you believe that's how you make a table? Imagine. <laughs> Two legs just wasn't cutting it. Lick's finger turns page. God. Uh, so that lasts three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Patricia Reagan's born. He comes back. When Patricia was delivered the night of the delivery, 
Ronald was not at the hospital. He spent that time with Christine Larson. Wow. Oof. Not soon after, Ronald went to Christine's, and another man answered the door in a bath towel. Ronald was furious. He stormed off, and that was the end of his affair with Christine Larson. Such betrayal. That she yeah, I mean, oh, such that's betrayal. Come on. What do you I mean, mean you're seeing someone else? <laughs> you're mine. Yeah. You can't. I can't find a loyal mistress. Hey, good lord! What in the world? I I need a monogamous mistress. <laughs> I can't for this town. It's just a it's a it's a den of sin. All these mistresses are cheating on these their married <laughs> lovers. Dirty, dirty girls. Oh, disgusting! I do kind of love how much fucking was going on in Hollywood, though. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <clears throat> it was probably pretty cool, you know. Yeah, it like, hey, anymore. Everybody's got everybody pregnant. So TV uh, starts taking off. Talent agency MCA announced they were going to get into TV production. Okay. So Ronald helped negotiate a waiver for MCA to do both. So SAG has to give them a waiver because it's a super conflict of interest. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, No other agency gets a waiver. Interesting. Weird how that works. Oh, uh, MCA represents Ronald Reagan. Ah, that's an interesting development. Suddenly, MCA got Ronald tons of TV shows to be in at a higher rate than he deserved. Okay. So they gave him his old rate from when he was a star as opposed to like what he should get. Right. Uh, now. Hmm. And he's just working TV. Like yeah. on shows? <clears throat> now he's, yeah, he's in TV shows okay. and TV movies. And, okay. Uh, in 1953, Ronald was picked to host General Electric Theater. Part of the job was also to go to GE plants, meet workers, and make speeches. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh no! Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it is. It, right? Right? <laughs> Here's the moment. <laughs> uh, the show is a huge hit, and his G handlers would give him right wing literature to educate him uh, about the problems with labor and oh, things like that. Wow! And then at the same time, Nancy's stepfather, who was a John Bircher, what was chatting in his ear about how bad. Here it the is. The left was. And here and it is. Now. Yeah. A devil on each shoulder. This is not Mr. Pushback. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Things to talk yeah. about? I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Talking points? <laughs> Yum. <laughs> His speeches won over workers. People related to him. They felt he understood and shared their concerns. Soon other groups asked him to speak, and he would rant about communists taking over unions and big government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. GE Theater had 25 million viewers oh. a week. Oh my God! Whoa. What? Ronald became one of the most recognized men in the country. Wow! Yeah. I always thought he was just in shitty uh, That's eight, what I eight thought. movies. He was, but no, he was a fucking big star. Once TV came, that kind of saved him. Right? Yeah, he, yeah, he was done without TV. Exactly. Yeah, the mo- he really hit a uh, a wall. He had like he literally had I think one good film role. Right, King's Row. That's it, and then every, everything else was just now Bonzo. Don't you know? Oh right, yeah. right. I forgot about Bonzo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then terrible song and dance movies with like Dick Powell. Oh, God. Dick Powell also kind of pushed him to the right, by the way. Which so did Bonzo, from what I hear. <laughs> Bonzo, <laughs> Bonzo <laughs> and Monkey was also like, Ron, yeah. they're know. taking our bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Eat the orangutans are communists. <laughs> 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 In 1958, (laughs) baby boy Ronald Prescott Reagan arrived. Michael was 14 and acting out, so Jane sent him to live with his dad. Okay. All right. Now, this is when seven-year-old Patty first met her half-brother, Michael. Oh, wow. Um, So, I mean, they so Wait, did she not even know he existed? Wow. I think she knew he existed, but Nancy wouldn't allow the kids around at all. That's so fucked. So he never, she never, right? So that is, I mean, as a parent, imagine, yeah, like your 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 daughter probably wish she had a other another kid, a, exactly, a brother yeah. sister. Yeah. So now imagine having one and never, never letting them meet. Yeah, like it's the, worse. the 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 monster you have to be as a parent to do that. Like to me, that's yeah. like insane. That the and the kid grow is grows up. V- Ha- really having it hammered in their head. Uh, it's my life is getting lived first and then whatever is left over you'll get, but you're not the main focus. Here. Right, right. I didn't get into it, but I read oh that, that Michael wrote a autobiography and at one point he wrote in it that he thought that their, that the black maid was his mother until he was like eight. Wow. Fuck. 
So that guy's life was fucking yeah. fucked And up. so also Nancy is really a source of, I mean, she is making him a worse yes. person. Yes, absolutely. Clearly. Yeah. Uh, so Nancy agreed to let him come live with them if he went to boarding school during the week and stayed at the Malibu ranch with Ronald on weekends. Well, if he nice. ever had to spend the night at the Pacific Palisades home, he had to sleep on the couch. Well, that's nice. There you go. Olive branch. That's Good nice. imprinting. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Surely you're going to grow up being a generous person. <laughs> that's certainly going to be the kind of guy who really cares how the waiter's feeling at yeah, dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In November 1959, Ronald, he, he's back as president of SAG, even though he's been saying all the shit about unions, right? So he is back as president, and he negotiates uh, SAG rituals <laughs> for old movies that are now being played on TV. Okay. Uh, right? So no one, uh, no one knew that GE had given him 20 25% ownership in, of GE theater productions. Wow. So he's management and... Right. Were, and negotiating for actors. Right. Is he getting a cut of the residuals of all the movies, or that's just a separate... Well, that's what he's negotiating for. Oh, my God. Wow. So, but he's he's making tons of TV money. Yeah, right, exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he endorsements. Doesn't, he does so crazy endorsements he, That now. means he's not going to care about the TV movies all that much. Wow. So he got... Wow. ...a good deal, but there was a one-time payout of $2.25 million for movies that were made between 1948 and, and 1959... And that, that money was used to start the health insurance and pension plan. So, so, so everyone else after, at 1960 on, if their movies were playing on TV, they would get residuals. Right. right? So all these old actors like Bob Hope and Mickey, uh, yeah. uh, Mickey Rooney are fucking livid because they got Nothing fucked compared, out of right. But right. Ronald doesn't care because Ronald is making big TV money. Right. Exactly. And it seems um, like he did do something in a he way. Did, he did. I mean, for us, he did something good. Yes, but, but for he the, also he also I, would he have done that, knowing what we know about this person? Would he have done that? I think uh, if I'll, he was I'll, not making TV, I'll money, answer you right but. now. Certainly, he would have. <laughs> Without question. Without question. There's not a doubt in my mind. Uh, so at the next SAG meeting, a member accused Ronald of bad faith because he was both a union leader and management. <laughs> Finally, <Yeah>. the <laughs> connection was made. <laughs> wow. With yarn on a cork board. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's a liar. <laughs> he denied this, but resigned the next month. Uh, you know, who wrote about this was, uh, Wayne Fetterman. I think it was an Atlantic article. Really? And in it, Wayne Fetterman, uh, is very adamant that he's not a Republican. Mm. I've talked to Wayne Fetterman. <laughs> <laughs> sure you have, David. <laughs> sure you're out there, Dave. Wayne bullshit. Uh, so m now, most importantly, this was around the time that Ronald started calling Nancy mommy. Oh, I did sort of know that, but I think oh, I've blocked it out like personal uh, it trauma. Makes my skin crawl. Mommy. Man. It's the pen Pence does that too, right? It just well, uh, excuse makes me. my skin. Mother. Pence is mother. Mother. Oh, mother. And Reagan is mommy.Other is, I think, mommy is horrifying. Mo I, th I find mother. I find mother harder. I think mother's mother harder. way Because you're getting mother's spankings harder. and stuff. Yes, exactly. Mother, it, yeah, it's the level of... Mother. I, I know, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Mother. So, mommy. <laughs> mommy. <laughs> mommy. <laughs> Oh. So JFK was running against Nixon, and JFK was running partially on creating Medicare. Mm -hmm. Ronald volunteered to make a spoken word record warning that Medicare would lead to the government takeover of, quote, every area of freedom as we have known in this country. There it is. The start. Yep. There, That's the beginning. When we learned. Of the end. The record was sent out and played at meetings across the country. Well, I, can you think of anything worse than a propagandist Ronald Reagan hour? <laughs> <laughs> Do like fl imagine hour, yeah. flipping that fucking record over. Hold yeah. on, let's get to the rest. This Hang is real on, good. Wait. What's he going to say? Oh, this is I good. Just, I just imagine a time when you would go to a meeting and someone put on a record. Oh, yeah. Right. Or, or talking. Yeah, exactly. Or you'd go to like some hosted dinner yeah. and he would go, now we're going to listen to this record. Right. <laughs> oh. And it's him. Like he can't. Him. He can't even be bothered to. And it's in town. Like you're yeah. in LA, and they're putting the record on. It's yeah. like, you know, he's a mile from us right now. <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that's a good right. listen, though. Yeah. Uh, but JFK won, and Medicare became one of the most popular government programs of all time. Mm -hmm. If Go not figure. the, if Weird. not yeah. the most popular. I mean, Social exactly. Security, Medicare. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, still, Ronald hit the lecture circuit, claiming JFK 
Reagan's policies would lead to, quote, social slavery. Well, look, you sure. got a hit record. You got a tour on it. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> you got to get out there. Go out there, do yeah. the hits. You got to give them what they want. You got to come up with new material. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hear about Medicare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's taking out a watermelon and a hammer. <laughs> Medicare. <laughs> Medicare. <laughs> do the social slavery line. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, and I, But he has been proven right. History has shown us that oh, Medicare yeah. is absolutely it's really social a slavery. For slavery. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people hate it. Yeah. Uh, so GE cut Ronald loose after MCA was investigated for a conflict of interest by the <laughs> Justice Department. What? And Ronald was obviously caught up in that. Oh, uh, and he testified and was like, oh, I don't remember. I don't recall. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, which is going to be a catchphrase for life. Yeah. Uh, also, he had moved too far right for even GE at this point. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of the most evil corporations in history. It's like, we got to get rid of this no, guy. No, honestly, you're freaking um, us out. Ooh, and that's uh, not yeah. good. We are genuinely right. irked by your behavior. I mean, and we are, again, yeah. the devil. I mean, we're, yeah. making, we're making napalm and you're creeping us <laughs> yeah. out. We are... We're leaving you, Ron. I don't know how hard that is to understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not us. It's you. And, and we say that Openly and with with all confidence. (laughs) When he was fired, he said, quote, Robert Kennedy is behind this attack on me. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And he blamed JFK for not being cast in films because his agent was a JFK supporter. (laughs) What? I mean, this is... But wait, (laughs) he had stopped getting cast in films a decade before that. (laughs) What are you... Uh, uh, Wheels were in motion. (laughs) This goes all the way to the top. (laughs) John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy (laughs) don't like me acting. Hey, Rob, between you and me, no more Reagan in films. That'll be my main platform. (laughs) Now, uh, Bonzo, Uh, on the other hand, that kid's got legs. (laughs) And boy, does he know how to use them. (laughs) Kid Jimmy's got Bonzo in a dress in his room. I just love your stuff. I've always been a huge fan. Uh, Whiskey? Do you drink whiskey? Can you smoke? Is that true? (sighs) Oh, God. Uh, So... Uh, so the Reagan had a party planned on the night JFK was assassinated. A guest called to see if it was still on. Nancy, quote, don't be silly. We'll expect to see you around 7 p.m. Oh, wow. I mean, that's like 9-11. Yeah. That's like having a dinner party it on is. 9-11. Well, that, that's the equi- equivalent of, you know, the fake story about uh, Muslims celebrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, right that that, that right. is the right. Muslim celebrating a death right. or a, a right. disaster. I, yeah, That's totally. them. Having a weird, you know, it was probably some weird, creepy blood ritual. Yeah, up in the mansion, and you know, like, yeah, Anton like Anton Levey was there. A Pentagon in sand. Yeah, something. Cutting, All right, Nancy, cut, now drain the blood from my penis, yeah, and we'll yeah. drink it. Cutting a monkey's penis and yeah. drinking the blood out of it. <laughs> this is what we do. Sorry, Bonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, who was eleven at the time, said her parents showed in no, no emotion when JFK was murdered. Right. Uh, so Ronald finally officially switched from Democrat to Republican. And soon he was giving a half hour speech on NBC for Barry Goldwater. So his speech oh, is so good that Barry Goldwater's like, let's get you on TV. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but after Goldwater lost, two of Goldwater's guys move over to Reagan's camp. Oh. And they and some other rich guys got together and, quote, became Ronald's kitchen cabinet. Okay. So they're basically unofficial advisors, rich guys. They're asking him to run for governor of California. Mm-hmm. So Ronald starts giving speeches around the state. In 1964, Ronald called free speech protests at UC Berkeley acts of, quote, anarchy with attempts to destroy the primary purpose of the university. Is, is this really the first time where someone is using that kind of... L- that la- it is so Trumpy in that language. So it, I mean, is this? Well, no. They had, there I were mean, people before then, like, um, um, oh God, Father Coughlin, Father Coughlin, and and his group were very, very, you know, speaking uh, these right dire wing. terms, super right wing, but, but yeah, speaking in very Enoch Powell over in England, you uh-huh. know, that Rivers of Blood speech. There were uh, there were apocalyptic uh, yeah. people that that were that were that would use that to rile people. Up. Right. Okay. Yeah. And and but Reagan's just following their example. Yeah, yeah. Because it works. Well, and it keeps building. And I mean, then remember yeah. McCarthy is like this. Like oh, right, 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 like, right. There's right, guys right, out right, there. That, McCarthy, right. For sure. Um, so he warned of quote <laughs> again this time up Berkeley. He warned of quote orgies so vile I cannot describe it to you. But I'll try. In my new album, Ron talks about a blood orgy. Blorgy. Ron Reagan's new hour. Blorgy. They're fucking monkeys. This was around the time I think he did his last 
TV movie, and it was uh, The Killers, and it features a scene where Ron slaps Angie Dickinson, and then John Cassavetes punches out Ronald Reagan. Oh, amazing. Uh, that was his last uh, Why screen can't role. that be in real life? Uh, just on a loop. Yeah. I wish that's how he left <laughs> off. Yeah, on a loop. Play that yeah. on a loop. Just Cassavetes, <laughs> and, he, and he knocks Reagan down. Like, he punches him and knocks him oh, down. Yeah. It's oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so... Ronald is out there speaking. He opposes the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. Middle-aged, white, working-class guys, super into it. Oh, sure. Uh, Ronald wins the GOP primary. New York Times, quote, California Republicans, against all councils of common sense, insisted upon nominating actor Ronald Reagan for governor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Democratic Governor Pat Brown called Ronald a right-wing extremist. And he ran a TV ad in which he was in a like a high school class he's talking to the students and then he tells a young black female student quote i'm running against an actor do you know who shot lincoln don't you oh jesus <laughs> christ i mean that is <laughs> oh my god some, that is Look, a mudsling I, reach yeah i am not a fan of ron but god damn dude <laughs> i mean what christ. the hell <laughs> what the fuck who signs off doing? on that uh, yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's the extremist. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm out of my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, holy... What class is this? Yeah. Uh, That's amazing. For his part, Ronald was on the cover of Look Magazine standing next to a black lawn jockey statue with large white lips in front of his ranch. Oh, God. Jeez. A hard choice between these two. Yeah. yeah. Ronald won in a landslide. Oh, my God. The outgoing first lady gave Nancy a tour of the governor's mansion. Okay. And the press tagged along. Nancy said it was a fire trap and an eyesore. Nice. Mm -hmm. On the film's yeah. tour? While, while the press is there, there walking around. That's good. To the ex-first lady. Sure. And the ex-first lady says, quote, we loved living in this house. Nancy, quote, oh, I'm sure you did. What <laughs> kind of awkward... Well, she's awful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but exactly. Can't you just? I mean, you're being filmed. Awful people <laughs> normally know when the camera's on, I guess, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy's secretary called uh, the Browns to ask them to move out of the mansion several days early so she could fix it up. Oh, God. Okay. They didn't. No. Nancy told Women's Wear Daily, <laughs> which, by the way, I still get. It's so uh, good. I get that and look monthly still. <laughs> I love that and look. It's my Bible. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. She told uh, Women's Wear Daily that she would be uh, she could be happy anywhere with Ron if Ronald and the kids were with her. Uh, not Just not his original kids. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. But only eight-year-old Ron was at home. Patty was at boarding school. Michael and Maureen were with Jane. Nancy also didn't allow them to see, be publicly seen with their father. It's very easy to love your children when you see them at holidays. Yeah, it yeah. is. You know, yeah. if I don't if I don't see my kids at Tubishvat every year, it's I my it's uh, a piece of my heart uh, is gone. I, <laughs> the piece of my heart is gone. You're a good dad. I don't uh, get to, if I don't get to wave to them uh, from the front lawn as hello! they drive by. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Uh, the <laughs> Reagans lasted one month in the governor's mansion. What? Nancy, quote, this place is just not safe. It backs up on the American Legion Hall, where I swear there are vile orgies every night. <laughs> what? Wait, is going the American on? Legion Hall? That's, that, that, that's where orgies are. <laughs> Let me tell you about Guadalcanal while I slap you with my dick. Like, what the hell does she think goes on in an American Legion Hall? What? Oh, my God. I, the orgies. <laughs> the orgies. You guys want to play foxhole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the scapegoating of orgies. Is so, oh I'm going to bring that back. Yeah, I'm just yeah. concerned about the orgies. <laughs> yeah. it seems like a hot area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little too much talking about orgies, you know what I mean? A yeah. defensive talking about orgies. Right, right. The orgies yeah, are they, bad. Yeah, they do me? go to orgies a lot. Yeah. Mm, okay. I would not shock anyone. No. Mommy? So... She told the press that she said to Ronnie, I can't let my children live there. So friends... They don't. They're in boarding school. Yeah, they're but anyway, not there. Right. right. So friends bought a fancy house and leased it to the Reagans. Oh, my God. And then Nancy complained, quote, wouldn't you think that the state would provide a residence for the governor and his family? Yeah, Nance, they did. Yeah, they did. So the state paid for the rent wow. in their new fancy house. And began building a new huge mansion. What? So relatable. Yeah, really. Folks, See, salt of the yeah, the salt folks, of the earth. Yeah, exactly. Folksy, yeah. You know? Nancy supervised the construction, and a lot 
of people said it was a bad use of state funds because there was a recession on. Now, as someone yeah. who has worked construction, let me tell you, this is the worst person in the world to work <laughs> for. The person who, while you're painting, is like, yeah. it doesn't look like it's dry. Yeah. Like, it's wet paint. You can go to your room. I can just handle this. Uh, so Californians in serious debt, so Ronald makes cuts. He lays off career employees. He slashed the state's university budget and ended free tuition. He cut 3,700 jobs in mental health and closed hospitals. The year after, a study revealed the number of mentally ill people entering San Mateo's criminal justice system had doubled. I mean, right there. Yeah. That I mean, just such an indicator of where we are today. That's it. it oh, is. Yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah. just the pulling of that thread really shows. Like today, that's why. That's yeah. and that's when Donald Trump is like saying, like, we got to get the homeless off the street. It's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Well, let's take. There was them. a a way to do that. Yeah. There used to be a thing yeah, we did. There used to be a mm-hmm. check. So Ronald campaigned on a pledge to quote clean up the mess at berkeley remember the protests yeah Yeah. what year is this though is this now 64 65 oh god what year is it yeah i think so yeah uh look oh no it's it's 60 it's late 60s it's 68 okay again i'm not defending ronald reagan but to, to that generation what was happening on campuses must have seemed like the end of the world. Oh, yeah. They, they could not oh, yeah. fathom what was going on. Right. And they were f- these people were freaking out. Yeah. They, and, that generation shit their pants yeah. and freaked out. And so for 60, 69, they, they, we're We talking... call it Spencer tracy yeah. <laughs> They shit the tub and puked in it, too. <laughs> they Spencer tracy Yeah, they Spencer that's tracy what that, That's what yeah. that generation did. You've also got, you know, the fucking Summer of Love and, like, just the oh, hippies yeah. and the Or Orgy stuff orgies. that has orgies. never... I mean, really, that's probably orgies. where a lot of this yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah, coming yeah. from. Uh, so Ronald called the university a quote haven for communist sympathizers, protesters, and sex deviants. Orgies, sure. After riots in Detroit, Newark, and Watts, the Department of Defense came up with Operation Garden Plot. I don't like it. Oh, already, already. Anytime they, any fucking time, a government agency gives something a nice name. Yep. <laughs> Operation, no child left behind. Operation yeah. Spring Sunshine. Oh, okay. <laughs> How many Every, were killed yeah. in the Spring Sunshine bombings again? Yeah. You're going to fertilize the garden with blood. <laughs> what? <laughs> a, it was a plan to deploy federal forces domestically when it looked like violence might break out. Jesus. Oh, boy. Now, their version of violence breaking out was protest by minority sure, people exactly. for yeah, 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 you know, right. housing or whatever. Yeah. How dare they? Uh, Ronald was a big part of this at the state level. At a 1969 Operation Garden Plot meeting, Ronald said the operation was in line with the, quote, 6,000-year history of man pushing the jungle back, creating a clearing where man can live in peace and go about their business business with some measure of safety. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, this is now. Yeah, that's obviously. not a. That's a dog bullhorn, by the way. That yeah, is not a dog right, whistle. Right, right, right. It's not yeah. done. That's what he always. Oh, uses. we're not done. Of huh? late, the jungle has been creeping in again, a little closer to our boundaries. This is fucked. Wow. Yeah, that's not coded. No. Yeah. No. Really. Yeah. yeah. But it'd almost be like. If, if a president today like tweeted like the word savages when they were describing <laughs> right, right. Jewish and um, uh, people of color that right. were in the, it's weird. If yeah, they use the term savages. Yeah, be a little weird. Anyway, I well again, but like we said, yeah. this is not possible. Yeah, I mean, today. we've we've evolved. I mean, my this is the '60s. <laughs> Good guys. lord, we're 50 years down yeah. the road. We're fine now. Now UC Berkeley had a 2-point acre plot off campus uh, that they were going to build student housing on, but then they ran out of money. So the site became a pile of debris and rusting cars. So then locals came and cleaned it up and built a public park, naming it the People's Park. Ronald did not like this. It was seen as a challenge by leftists on property rights. It's a park. (laughs) What are you talking? Like parks, I don't, uh, parks don't have political affiliation. Yeah. They have jungle gyms. And also you don't have property rights if you're not using the friggin' property. Yeah, right, It's just a pile of rubble. (laughs) That's uh, that's a good, that's capitalist rubble there, please. Bring that rubble back (laughs) in the park, rubbing it up again. That'll teach you. I want rusty cars. He told school administrators to act. The school and park organizers began negotiating a deal when at 4.30 a.m. on May 15, 1969, police arrived with a fencing company. An eight-foot-tall fence was put up around the park. Then at noon that day, students held a rally on campus, and then they marched peacefully to the park. Cops were guarding it. 
A fire hydrant was open and some police were soaked. Then they fired tear gas. Then people threw rocks. Sheriff's deputies were called in by Ronald and guards from a local jail who were not trained as deputies. Oh, That'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you're making a weird face. Yeah. There were 800 officers. Oh, my God. And then more protesters arrived. Reagan's office told police to use whatever methods they wanted. That's a great thing to say. <laughs> Get creative. Guys, here's my and, and and please take this in the right in right hand. Have at it. Uh, and please have some fun with right it. Tone. Really yeah, yeah. explore the space. <laughs> use a protester's body to beat another protester up. Go go crazy. <laughs> Cops moved in, swinging their nightsticks, and then fired tear gas as people ran away. They then began shooting shotguns. Some people were on the roof Uh of a bookstore watching, and a sheriff's deputy shot at the roof. James Rector was hit six times. What the fuck? Jesus. Ronald claimed the people on the roof were throwing rebar and that the pavement couldn't be seen because it was covered in bricks, rocks, and the bodies of sheriff's deputies who had fallen, but that is clearly a lie because there's photographs. (laughs) James Rector died. Jesus. Another student was blinded. Reporters saw cops shooting at people who were running away. At least 128 people were sent to the hospital with serious injuries. 30 of them had been shot. A doctor at the hospital, quote, the indiscriminate use of shotguns was sheer insanity. That's so crazy. When asked why the police used such force, Ronald answered, quote, it is very naive to assume that you should send anyone into that kind of conflict with the fly swatter conflict i mean th- that is the, the, the he made the conflict that, that, that yeah. really is what gets so They're frustrating to the part oh yeah like, you're right the, the creation of the conflict to complain about the conflict and overreact yeah, to the conflict exactly. and then blame the people who aren't but that's the that's a very fascist yes piece of that course is, but it, it, that is, it is absolutely the the goddamn brown shirts going to uh, yeah. uh union and communist thing right. and then starting trouble and then when they fight back they're like see how violently we had right. to wipe yeah, them right. out what could we do right. oh my god this is terrible yeah it's putting your finger wink, in front wink. of someone's face until they push it away and then you're like Physical, he, physically he touched hit me physically I, touched. I have to destroy him yeah. now yeah. yeah so Ronald declared a state of emergency and sent in the National Guard on May 20th <laughs> National Guard helicopters flew over the Berkeley campus spraying tear gas what wow wind blew it into a hospital and elementary schools i mean oh god come on it's <laughs> yeah you know what you guys <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> you got, look it's hard to be governor <laughs> yeah you know but I mean? also he gotta, like sending in the national guard to a problem like the yeah. police were shooting people yeah. the national like the this people is, this need is, the, the national this is like guard. a couple yeah. days this is like a day later so now it's just people on campus. He's just yeah, yeah and in exactly. hospitals and schools. Just walking to class and again. <laughs> yeah. ah! Ronald would later concede this may have been a quote tactical mistake. Well, oh man, you know it. That's why I want to bomb the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Show that thing. On May twenty second, uh, two days later, five hundred people were arrested. Many of them were not even protesters. They were jailed and beaten. A year later, Ronald stuck by his decision, quote, if it takes a bloodbath, let's get it over with. No more appeasement. Good Lord. Appeasement? What? Oh, it's very Christ. violent rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jesus. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. He was reelected in 1970 with 53% of the vote. Yeah. Wow. After that. After all that, yeah. he, he, people are like, that's our guy. Who's he running he, again? He, he killed someone. Like, his orders yeah. killed someone. Right. Yeah. Who was standing on a roof watching, and that's it. Yeah. So he got 53% of the vote. His priority was welfare reform. He spoke about huh. lady welfare cheats and said his staff, quote, discovered thousands of people who were receiving welfare checks at the same time they were gainfully employed. And one couple earned more than $100,000 between them. There was absolutely no proof of any of these statements. Ronald was n- Ronald was known to accept whatever the last person he spoke to told him. Oh boy! Mm. If his staff a fun gave, trick to have. If his staff Weird gave superpower. <laughs> <Strange. laughs> it's not a popular X Men. I can repeat whatever bullshit I just heard. Let's go. <laughs> if his staff would come in to give both sides of an argument, he would accept the first thing he heard and say that was the way to go. That's it. Yeah. So the staff began working everything out before they would bring it to him. Right. In 1971, the day after the UN voted to recognize the People's Republic of China, 
Ronald called Nixon and vented about the delegates who voted against the U.S. Quote, last night, I tell you to watch that thing on television as I did to see those those monkeys from those African countries. Damn them. They're still uncomfortable wearing shoes. And Nixon laughed hard. Uproariously. There's there's, uh, audio of it. Right. It's it's recent. They found that very recently. They just uncovered it. Yeah. Right. That's fun. There you go. <clears throat> Just a couple of presidents Just chewing guys. the fat. You know what? Look, they, they should re- they should do that as a crank yankers. Right, <laughs> right, right. And get the puppets. Attack <laughs> that, that would out. be it'd great. Be funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Watergate broke, Ronald said it was a not criminal, just illegal. <laughs> There it is. There you go, Yogi there Berra. It there it is. <laughs> it's going, there it is. Gleaming the cube. <laughs> Gleaming. <laughs> As evidence came out, people bailed on Nixon, but Ronald hung in there, saying they were, quote, not criminals at heart. <laughs> at heart! Wow. <laughs> what, I mean, <laughs> imagine, imagine having that ability. Oh. His heart is good. I'm the wizard. <laughs> uh, he didn't run for governor again. The mansion they built was just being finished when he left office. Turn it into a park. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the new governor, Jerry Brown, refused to limit it, calling it, quote, garish, expensive Taj Mahal. Brown instead lived in a two-bedroom apartment. Mm. California eventually sold the mansion in 1984 without a governor ever living there. Wow. Jesus. They just re- they just re- fixed up the old mansion, the one that she right. hated. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ronald's cabinet wanted him to run for president. He didn't want to. He was now making good money with a radio job and writing a column. Nancy wanted him to run. She consulted three astrologers. All said 1976 was not the right year, but she still pushed him to run, and he agreed. He went with what is called the Southern strategy, appealing to racists oh, using coded go. language. <sighs> he launched his campaign with a speech emphasizing states' rights in Philadelphia, Mississippi, where three civil rights workers had been murdered in 1964. Again, uh-huh. the most uncoded coded oh, language you could use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. He spoke at, at there. He spoke of dismantling the Civil Rights Commission, opposing affirmative action, and cutting federal ties to cities with social programs that were seen as ben- a benefit to black people, like subsidized housing. This is when he first in- invented the woman on welfare in Chicago, who has 80 names, 30 addresses from episode two right, right, or something. Right, right, right. The welfare queen. Right, right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, all made up. He made up a big thing yeah, about this yeah. woman, and she turns out, you know, None she wasn't it, real. Right. Ronald sometimes got his knowledge from letters that people sent him. Uh, that's not good. No, not at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> One Did he just hold it up to his head without <laughs> opening it? He was sunny. <laughs> Sis boom ba. <laughs> he was super into letters, writing and getting them. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, yay, letters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Like, come Are on. the letters here? <laughs> I'm the president. Ooh, the postman. The postman, <laughs> mommy. Wee. Wee. <laughs> One person wrote and said there was more oil in Alaska than Saudi Arabia, so Ronald put it in a speech. <laughs> Great. There you go. Perfect. Oh, why That's... didn't we know more about it? I, we could have sent him the craziest. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just to see if he could say it. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. That would have been yeah. such a pleasure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just convincing him. You know, there's a secret colony on the moon ruled by Vincent Price. <laughs> the best water's in volcanoes. <laughs> Another person wrote about disposing of nuclear waste by turning it into golf ball sized objects and then launching them into the ocean. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Why His- not? <laughs> Ronald's campaign Four. manager convinced him to, quote, save that one for later. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald, I think the issue is that one's too good. So let's hold on to that yeah, one yeah. for a little while. Let's sit on that one. Ooh. Yeah, let's keep... <laughs> when you make the run. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald was also massively influenced by right-wing magazines. An article in the ultra-conservative magazine Human Events led Ronald to say on the radio that Henry Kissinger was behind a secret plan to give away the Panama Canal which could lead to Americans having their mail monitored by Panama's intelligence oh. agency. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> Lots happening. <laughs> There's a, so much to unpack there. So somehow... Henry Kissinger, I, I even, Ford's yeah. Secretary of State. I know. and But somehow our mail goes through the Panama Canal. That's I, right. <laughs> all right. Of and course I, it's mail. All mail goes on a boat through the Panama Canal. I didn't Canal. know that. What are you? Do you know how mail works? I went to public school. Post so office, that. Panama. 
<laughs> we still haven't figured that out. We, yeah, we yeah, take yeah. all of our mail it on the East weird. Coast. We <laughs> ship it yeah. around through Panama. Right, right. And so, and see, I'll, I'll be honest. It seems like an unnecessary step. <laughs> it's a little weird. I think we could cut that one. And of course, he's paranoid about where the, what's happening to the mail. He's like, where are my fact letters? <laughs> the Panamanians will put crazy shit in there. <laughs> Nancy made sure he got rest while he was campaigning. Always he had an afternoon nap. Aw. Uh, he and must his... have looked adorable. <laughs> yeah, surely. Just... Just... Welfare <laughs> queens. <laughs> <laughs> Oil in Alaska. <laughs> Sports scores start coming out. Oh, boy. Uh, and his schedule had to be approved by an astrologer. Oh, boy. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't think he should have yeah. lunch then. Yeah. Not with Mercury in retrograde, <laughs> yeah, he will. Look at Taurus. Yeah. Does um, he eat ham? He needs to stop. Look at Taurus. <laughs> so Ford got the nomination, but Ronald shifted voters to the right. He ran again in 1979. But he almost c- took the nomination away from Ford. There was a, there it was was a huge mess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was close. Yeah. Uh, so on November, 4, on November 4th, 1979, Iranian students seized, seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran and took 52 Americans hostage. Reagan became the GOP candidate and offered the VP slot to George H.W. Bush. Bush had campaigned in favor of e- the Equal Rights Amendment, abortion rights, and gun control, but he tossed it all aside and endorsed Reagan's platform. Wow. Nice. Hey, so uh, <laughs> check it out. Everything I believe in is out the window. <laughs> I had my fingers you know, crossed. Yeah. You know who was also very much for gun control back in the 60s in California was Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan because the Black Panthers yeah. really enjoyed uh, open carry. Right. And then he was, oh, no, you know, we need gun control. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's how you get it done. I took that out, but yeah. All right, sorry. That's all right. (laughs) There's just so much to put in. I know. It's it's just uh, a gallery of horrors. So uh, Bush and Reagan's campaign slogan, let's make America great again. Mm. Wait, was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's fine. I was so not aware of politics back then. I was only 11. (laughs) Let's make America great again. Fantastic. Yeah. The country was in bad shape. High inflation, high unemployment, an energy crisis, and the hostage situation. Ronald ran the exact same campaign as 76. Even Nancy gave anti-busing speeches. Oh, boy. He wanted to slash taxes and opposed unemployment insurance, or as he called it, quote, vacation money for the lazy. That's an <laughs> asshole. Jesus. Un- Old man Potter. Uh, yeah. Unempl- what, are they, what are they supposed <laughs> yeah, to do? I know. I mean, yeah, honestly, it'd be better if they were just shooting people and taking <laughs> stuff. Like, it's also like, th- this is the only country that shits on vacations yeah, so exactly. hard. Like, every yeah. other nation in the world is like, what do you need? A month ago for a year, you know? Yeah. In America, it's like, well, you got a day. Yeah. How you dare it? you not grind 24 Come on. That's how you enjoy life. Hear those machines creeping over? <laughs> So Ronald won 44 states. In December, it was reported Nancy didn't understand why the Carters wouldn't move out of the White House early so she could get started on redecorating. (laughs) Well, to be fair, she knows what she's doing. During the transition, word came that Ronald seemed uninterested. A Washington Post headline on December 18th, 1979, quote, Reagan on the sidelines. He often seems remote from transition. Longtime aide Ed Meese countered that Ronald, quote, is really running things. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Well, there, well, there you there go. Well, very <laughs> validating. Thank you so much. No, he's actually smart. No, well, he's... damn, he got me. He does stuff. Oh, <laughs> what a shocker. Uh, on January 20th, 1981, Ronald was inaugurated. Carter hadn't slept in 48 hours because his administration was negotiating for four days straight to get the hostages out. He agreed to lift some sanctions against Iran if the hostages were returned. As Ronald began his address, the hostages were freed. In his speech, Ronald told a story from the movie Marine Raiders as if it were real. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's kind of fun. (laughs) Who can forget when that giant ape rampaged through Manhattan in 1933? We still recover. Those those brave biplane fighters brought him down. (laughs) But in the end, it was beauty killed the beast. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I'm introducing the Kong Amendment. Why didn't he like? Yeah, why didn't he confuse like more exciting movies? Yeah, oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, King you know Kong that? was our greatest threat back then, <laughs> and we got rid of him. Everyone talks about saving the environment, but there are black lagoons filled with gill men we, who uh, want to steal our female swimmers. We have to stop the spiders from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time for Mothra. <laughs> Mothra. <laughs> uh, he also talked about a soldier who had died in World War One who was buried in Arlington. 
But the press looked into it, and there was no soldier buried by that name in Arlington. The mm. New York Times confronted the White House, who said Ronald didn't mean to imply the soldier was buried in Arlington. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's cleaned up. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, we, we couldn't find a, a private Seymour Butts uh, uh, in Arlington. He misspoke. Someone wrote that in a letter. He, <laughs> that was in a letter he got. A letter. On Inauguration Day, Ronald visited Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill. O'Neill showed him a desk that had been President Grover Cleveland's. Hmm. Ronald looked at it and said he played Grover Cleveland in a movie. And O'Neill then told Ronald he had actually played Grover Cleveland Alexander, the baseball player, not the president. Oh, my God. Oh, what? Wow. The recall? <laughs> yeah. What? That's not good yeah. news. And that's why... Tip spent the next eight years hammered. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, that moment for I'm Tip must like, have well, been a it. very I mean, <laughs> it's a tipping point. Yeah, he took his two-year chip out, tossed it into the Potomac, <laughs> and just started going. I mean, literally, as I was doing research. <laughs> I'll be in the tub. The best, and all the research, the best quotes, and I, I take them out because there were so many, but it's just Tip O'Neill going, he's a fucking idiot! <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, just over and over. <laughs> I played Grover <laughs> Cleveland. There's a long pause before you react oh, there. You're like, how do God. I unpack this? <laughs> so instead of chief of staff, Ronald had what was called the Troika. Jim Baker, Ed Meese, and Mike Deaver ran it together. Okay. Three just fantastic, wonderful human beings. Fantastically just, moral, <laughs> upright men. Okay. What if we got three psychopaths? Yeah. <laughs> So Deaver got along great with Nancy. They shared interests, and he got into astrology. Oh, boy. Alexander Haig was appointed Secretary of State. William Clark, who worked for Reagan in California, was appointed Under Secretary of State. At his hearing, he was asked if he was familiar with the struggles of the British Labor Party. He said he was not. Did he know which European nations don't want U.S. nuclear weapons on their soil? He didn't know. Could he name the Prime Minister of South Africa? Quote, I cannot, sir. Prime Minister of Zimbabwe? Nope. On and on. <laughs> At least you're comfortably hanging yeah. in there with those punches. Like, nope, also nothing. Our current president? Nah. Nah. Drawing a blank. <laughs> Not sure. Mm. The U.S. had a $60 billion deficit. Ronald announced a federal hiring freeze, halted pending regulations, including airbags and cars and energy standards for new buildings. And he said he wanted a 10% income tax reduction for each year in 81, 82, and 83. To make up for that, he would cut federal employee benefits, food stamps, child nutrition programs, unemployment insurance, welfare benefits, and money for art, humanities, and sciences. 83 right. federal programs were gutted. It only saved $41 billion. And then he gave tax cuts to the oil industry and savings and loans, and military spending went up by $28 billion. Here we go. Jesus. And we're off. <laughs> and we we're off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this was supply-side economics. Everyone mm -hmm. called it Reaganomics or trickle-down economics, or as George Bush had called it in the campaign, voodoo economics, because mm -hmm. it was absolute bullshit. Yeah. Right. It has literally never worked. No, and Ever. they still and they still literally, bring it up. They still bring it up. They it's still they, they still yeah. call it trickle down. Yeah, it's like they've gotten pretty good at renaming bullshit. It's the, and time they to don't stop trickle down. It's amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> the House was controlled by Democrats, so they pushed back on the tax cuts. On the day that Ronald's government declared ketchup would now be counted as a vegetable in school lunches to uh, save money, what ketchup a and salt. What a great time. Yeah. What, that's like what it's like America's coming out party. <laughs> Ketchup's a fucking vegetable. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> on the same day, it was announced that Nancy spent over $200,000 on New China. Hmm. Wow. People weren't happy. An ex aide explained, quote, it would be a mistake to say per se that ketchup was classified as a vegetable. Ketchup in combination with other things is classified as a vegetable. Like your when fries. asked what those things were, <laughs> quote, French fries or hamburgers. Oh my God. Yeah. What? That's Heck amazing. Yeah. That, I well, mean, really are. Potatoes great, and tomatoes. We're there you great go. Great nation. God. <laughs> Holy and tomatoes. shit. It's a vegetable yeah. if, it, if it's with meat. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Sawdust is a grain. <laughs> yeah. Now, James Watt, who was Secretary of the Interior, was a bit religious. At a hearing, he asked if natural resources must be preserved for future generations. And he said yes. Okay. But, quote, I do not know how many future generations we can count on before the Lord returns. Which, by the way, that uh, our current guy, Mike Pompeo, is uh, saying we will fight in Iran until the rapture. No. Yeah. That he says that, in, and he said that multiple times. We will fight until the rapture. Okay. Well, that's comforting. So yeah. there you go. 
<laughs> in December 1980. Well, what's it going to be like that moment where it's all done? I just hope there's enough oxygen for us to breathe in that nothing is happening when it's all said and done. So that <laughs> yeah. We can at least look at the people who've been yeah. calling this okay. moment. See? Just be like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> with like the last breath. Yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> Die together. <laughs> In December 1984, nuns were raped and executed in El Salvador. This was just one of many atrocities committed by the government-backed death squads against leftists. But due to the fight against communism, Ronald kept funding the government of El Salvador. One of his top foreign policy advisors, Gene Kirkpatrick, said, quote, they were not just nuns, they were political activists. Well, I mean, what Holy the fuck? shit. And they also what? killed a fucking priest, right? Yeah. Romero. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that you, like, that doesn't mean anything. I right? mean, they were murdered. Yeah. And raped. yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it has no, yeah. Secretary of State Fuck. Alexander Haig told the House Foreign Affairs Committee that, quote, perhaps the vehicle the nuns were riding in may have tried to run a roadblock or may have accidentally been perceived to have been doing so. And there may have been exchange of gunfire. Wait a minute. Exchange. So the, wait, they're saying the gun, the, the nuns were shooting? Nuns with yeah, guns? That's what he's saying. he's saying that the nuns might have been armed. <laughs> they were sexually assaulted. Yeah, there's yeah. Uh, exactly. So there's like, even if you were to be like, okay, they were killed. Why is there that middle step? Jesus yeah. Christ. In a gun like battle. The fucking, the lack of soul you have to have. I, I mean, yeah, really, yeah. like, I, I would never say stop talking because you want to hear the <laughs> darkness inside right, of right. these people. But yeah. how is someone not just like, dude, just And also, up. again, not that this should matter. They're, they're fucking evil people. But not only are they saying the shit you're saying they're saying, they then went and got eight hours sleep. That's right. Like, right. I've, I've like lost nights of sleep. Because I thought that, oh, I think I may have lied to that person. Yeah, you or you said I, the I'm wrong thing. Gonna, or I, I offended them. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Or, or I, I promised something and now I can't deliver it and I'm yeah. going to let someone down. And these people are excusing the rape Dude. of nuns and then just went right to bed. Like yeah. the three fine. stooges with the like, yeah, just like I mean, none. Comfortably. It's just, God damn. Sociopaths. Yeah. Yeah. Mask Hague, of sanity. Haig then told the U.S. ambassador to send a cable stating the military was making progress investigating the murders. And the ambassador refused, writing, quote, I will have no part of a cover-up. He was soon removed. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, according to a CBS poll, on 25% of Americans knew El Salvador was in Central America. Wow. Well, their ketchup's a vegetable. Yeah, sure. <laughs> March 30th, 18, uh, 1981, as Ronald Reagan left the D.C. Hilton, he was shot by 26-year-old John Hinckley Jr., who was super into Jodie Foster. He left a note in his hotel room, quote, Jody, I'm asking you to please look into your heart and at least give me the chance with this historical deed to gain your respect and love. Jesus uh, Christ. She, she didn't go for it. She oh, didn't. That didn't she work? Didn't. No. Oh. Uh, I remember them being married. Try to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. you do. A D.C. police officer, a Secret Service agent, and press secretary James Brady were also shot. Mm -hmm. Brady was shot in the head. Jesus. A shot glanced off the bullet proof panel of the car pancaked and hit the president under the arm then lodged in his lung just one inch from his heart uh there was a real possibility he would die and the white house went into turmoil george bush was on a plane heading to texas and he was told to return secretary of state alexander Haig then declared mm. himself in charge oh wow so what much. he just I rolled in it. it was like it's me he goes up this go ahead quote the helm is right here, and that means right in this chair for now, constitutionally, until the vice president gets here. But he was wrong. <laughs> Very because wrong. The Speaker, Speaker of the House yeah. was supposed to take over. Like every kid, yeah. children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking, there's, there's, there's a schoolhouse rock song about it, I think. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So Haig went into the press room and was asked who was in charge. Quote, constitutionally, gentlemen, you have the president, the vice president, and secretary of state in that order. And should the president decide he wants to transfer the helm to the vice president, he will do so. As of now, I am in control here he in the White House, pending the return of the vice president and in close touch with him. If anything came up, I would check with him, of course. So he is, is he saying he's higher than the vice president? No, he's saying right now right he's in now charge. Right now he is. Because he's in the air. Because he's in the air. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if he was like, yeah. it's also because he's not here. It's kind of me forever. Maybe this is another dollop, but also wasn't John? Weren't John Hinckley's parents like either friends of the Bushes or fr like? No, I don't know. It, it was, oh, really? There was a more of a. He wasn't just some random weirdo. Right. He was connected to them socially or oh, something. Really? It was some. Yeah, it was some weirdness. That's gonna be an awkward that cocktail be a, party. After very that. so. Uh, 
My son, let me just start with. <laughs> he was always. Oh weird. boy, he is yeah. crazy. He doesn't get women. <laughs> hey, wait, hang on. Do we have violent video games yet? Shit, I was gonna. <laughs> oh, damn it. Sorry. That's another ten years. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. I so, uh, Jody, how did you and John meet? <laughs> In his defense, Candleshoot is a great movie. That was <laughs> so good. <laughs> So uh, after this, the secretary, uh, the defense secretary confronted Haig and Haig said, quote, look, you better go home and read your constitution, buddy. That's the way it is. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you get to the, how love, do you get to the podium without also, someone like stopping? you? I know. And I also love that it, it's like an old 1940. Hey, you better go read your constitution, buddy. Like, you and he's wrong. It's he's all so, perfect. so freaking wrong. It's the best. Why don't you go read your constitution? Put your constitution on your pillow. See yeah. if it gets in there throughout Moses. Uh, all of Ronald's <laughs> kids, all of Ronald's kids rushes DC. Uh, Patty and Ron were allowed to see him immediately. Nancy told Maureen and Michael he was too weak to see them. Oh Jesus! Wow. Of course, he you know what? See two kids Fucking a day. play on, player. Yeah. Don't you ever stop, Nancy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he left the hospital in two weeks, and his ratings, his approval rating, shot to sixty-eight percent. Right. Hmm. He asked for major cuts to Social Security, and the Senate voted oh, against sh- ninety-six to nothing. Okay. Ronald then went on TV and asked everyone to call their congressman and demand tax cuts, and people did. <sighs> Congress finally gave in. He got twenty five percent tax cuts over three years. There was this was the biggest reduction in U.S. taxes in the past seventy years. Yeah, great. When he signed the tax, way to cu- go, Hankley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good work. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, when he signed the tax cuts, he was in the middle of a twenty eight day vacation at his California ranch. His dog walked by, and a reporter asked what the dog's name was. Oh, no. Ronald, quote, Lassie. Millie. Millie. Millie's her name. Uh Uh-oh. Lassie, is something wrong with the president, girl? (laughs) What's going on, Lassie? Is the president's mind leaving him, Lass? What's going on? I mean, this is fucking 81. That's good. Yeah, this wasn't that. uh, No, this this, this is an 87. Uh, Yeah. The official story was like, well, it was the last few months. No. No, No, yeah. no. No. Right. In June, Ronald was at a reception for mayors. He walked up to a black mayor and said, quote, How are you, Mr. Mayor? I'm glad to meet you. How are things in your city? He was not a mayor. He was Samuel Pierce, Ronald's only black cabinet member. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ronald. Come on, dude. Wow. Oh. Ugh. In 1981, there was a strange... You probably dis- just pretend you're the mayor. It's so yeah, awkward. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. pretty sure, good. Yeah. Crime's down. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not your housing secretary <laughs> no. at all. Yeah, over in Flappyville. If Flappyville's doing good, is it? <laughs> uh, I know you guys had some trouble. <laughs> Oh, God bless Flappyville. Yeah, I love it. I got to come back there. I love the cotton candy pool. I'm a jet plane. I'm going to fly out of the room now. Watch me. Yay. Uh, In 1981, there was a strange disease affecting mostly gay men. On July 3rd, 1981, the New York Times published an article about it. The media started calling it Gay-Related Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or GRIDS for short. Mm. Also, the gay plague and the gay cancer. The White House made no mention of it. The Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, PATCO, was threatening to go on strike. They were one of the few unions who had backed Ronald in the election because many were (coughs) veterans. Ronald had told the union head, quote, if I'm elected president, I will take whatever steps are necessary to provide our air traffic controllers with the most modern equipment available and to adjust staff levels. He did absolutely none of that. And the membership authorized a strike. Ronald said public employees couldn't go on strike, but public employees had struck in the past. And it took 21 weeks to be trained to be an air traffic controller. So they thought this gave them power. And at union meetings would stay, say stuff like, quote, what are they going to do? Fire us all? Yeah. On <laughs> August 31st, the union of 13,000 members struck. Ronald declared them in violation of the law and gave them 48 hours to return to work. A judge backed him and ordered Patco to pay $100,000 for each hour they were striking. 1,300 went back to work. The rest were fired and banned from federal employment for life. Some for, li- for, I'm sorry, for life? For life. That's just R- Reagan, uh, cl- Sorry, Clinton uh, reversed it. But oh, okay. Some union officials were arrested. With military That's controllers, like Harlan County, USA, shit. Yeah, and, and this, I mean, literally, like, like, Matawan coal miner strike shit. Yeah. Without, oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, 
And okay, keep going. With military uh, controllers and supervisors, the FAA operated at 70% of normal. The government trained new controllers. PATCO had some demands like taking flights to get familiar with the pilot's landing experience, and Ronald used these, saying they were unnecessary perks to get the public on his side. Before it had been not acceptable to replace workers with scabs, but now that was over. Firing workers was legitimized as a response to labor disputes, and this became a huge blow to labor forever. Yeah. It, I mean, really, yeah. that, that is kind of like, it, it, we've never really recovered never from that, done. right? Because no. it was like the tipping point yeah. where yeah. Yeah. it was now acceptable to do that. Yeah. And, yeah. There were a lot of leaks to the press from the White House. Ronald's budget director was quoted in Atlantic Monthly article saying, quote, none of us really understand what's going on with these numbers. <laughs> and that supply side economics was, quote, a Trojan horse to bring down the top rate. He he said it out loud how, to Atlantic how, Monthly. I mean, how he said it out loud. <laughs> out. Atlantic. Wow. Yeah, I mean... Ronald vetoed a stopgap spending bill and shut down the federal government for the first time in history. Tip O'Neill said, quote, he knows less about the budget than any president in my lifetime. He can't even carry on a conversation about the bubble, about the budget. It's an absolute and utter disgrace. Glug, glug. (laughs) (laughs) My face isn't red enough. And then he would eat nine pizzas. (laughs) Anyway, I broke my record for pizza eating. Any questions on that? Hey, nine pies. In what would become a repeating pattern, Ronald, at a fundraiser, uh, said a blind man had written him a letter saying if cutting off his pension would help the country, he was for it. Ronald said the letter was written in Braille. But, uh, he gave absolutely no proof of this letter. He would talk about letters like this for the rest of his presidency <laughs> and never give any proof. Uh, 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 I mean, okay, yeah. is there Braille paper? <laughs> I mean, like, can you hand... Like, I think you can write. I bet you Braille, can. You do it in the yeah. little circle, almost like a, or you do it with a little punch thing. Right. Okay. So. So he could have done, it, but then. Possible. But then who read? Who it? read yeah, it? It's just it's a lot of. There's a lot, lot of leaps. On there. Yeah, yeah, too yeah. many leaps. <laughs> um, uh, a, a blind man with no hands who was allergic to paper wrote me a letter <laughs> saying that. So I wrote him back, <laughs> just by punching a pen into it. I hope it made sense. <laughs> Looked like his. Might have been his. Um. Now, there was also too much cheese. Whoa, oh, this is not I, the first president to I rem- face this I issue. remember those dark years. Yeah, was, right, yeah right. We, we lost my We uncle. need a hero. <laughs> my, uncle. <laughs> yeah. my uncle died in the Cheddar War. <laughs> in the Cheddar Surplus. Yeah. A huge wheel of Edom <laughs> crushed him. <laughs> Do we need macaroni now more than ever. <laughs> During the 70s, dairy prices had shot up, and the government intervened and prices plummeted. So Carter subsidized the dairy industry, which led to a surplus in dairy and cheese. Okay. Eventually, there were 500 million pounds of cheese stored in hundreds of warehouses in 35 states. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Oh, my God. And Ronald had no idea what to do with it. I can't imagine having this issue. (laughs) Cheese crisis. That's the only thing that's keeping me up. (laughs) I can't sleep. Cheese gate. (laughs) So it's processed American cheese designed to last a long time. This became public when the agricultural secretary came to a White House event with a five pound block of green molding cheese. He showed it to the press. And said, quote, it's moldy. It's deteriorating. We can't find a market for it. We can't sell it. We're looking to try to give it away somehow. (laughs) The public became very upset because Ronald ran on cutting welfare, but he was hoarding cheese. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we like what bothers us. Like what are we are bothered by the dumbest? Yeah. Like we don't know anything. We'll call Congress people for tax cuts that will make our lives worse. Well, we're, we're, we're kicking mental patients out of hospitals to die on the street. Where's my cheese? Uh, enough bullshit. What, what, how come there's no cheese? We're, we want to see pictures of the cheese house. <laughs> we're not idiots. Storm the cheese house. That's we got it. a quesadilla shortage. <laughs> Open these doors. All right, boys, start munching. Send out your cheese, motherfuckers. <laughs> so <That> fucking idiots. <laughs> So Ronald went on TV and gave a speech about cheese. Quote, well, this, I mean, imagine, I can't imagine <laughs> watching the president. Hello. Somber night in the White House. 
Quote, at a time when American uh, families are under increasing financial pressure, their government cannot sit by and watch millions of pounds of food turn to waste. The Temporary Emergency Food Assistant Program was created and it handed out blocks of cheese to elderly, low-income people and aid organizations. People lined up to get their cheese. At the end of 1981, Ronald Reagan's approval rating was at 49%. Even after the cheese giveaway? Yeah, I mean, What honestly, does he have to do? I know, and I like the way that it's like, a, I mean, it's a problem, and so you're like, I'll just give away all the cheese to the old people. It's yeah. like, this is not... That's what's <laughs> happening in America right now? <laughs> well, we found a home. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's the end of our first half. Oh my God, what a what a wonderful place to end! <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it, it would be amazing if it ended there. But well, guys, I, hang on. I think there's a second part. Well, yeah. the cool thing is the second part is where it gets really crazy. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> well, then I, with that, I'm gonna use the restroom and get a beverage. Okay. All right. Wow, solid.